morning. This is Vikesh Manigandan from Kalanir Karnadi Institute of Technology, working as assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engin Computer Science and Business Systems and Center for Training and Placements. Today we are going to see about a one of a cool and interesting topic. You are going to learn about what do you mean by object oriented programming. Let me start from what is an object oriented programming? It's a type of a programming language that deals everything as projects. First of all, before going to the object oriented programming, I will tell you what is a programming language and what is a computer programming language. Right. So everyone he, we speaks with our own mother tongue. Similarly, computer has its own language of understanding that is binary language. And if you want to communicate with a computer, we should interact with him only in terms of a binary language. But unfortunately, we don't know how to spoken a binary language. For that, we have created a one kind of a language, one kind of a programming language that will instruct the computer to do a certain task. Right. So these programs are wrote in a sim in a simple English language in a proper syntactical and grammatical format in terms of programming. Right. So we already know about there are some kind of programming like structure oriented programming is there, procedure oriented programming is there, object driven is like there, object based programming is there. Apart from that, one of the current trending concept of programming is object oriented programming. So it's a type of a programming that deals everything as objects. It is introduced to support modularity, reusability, enhanced security, enhanced support for structure oriented language. So what do you mean by modularity? Let's say that we are doing a project. So in a project more than one persons are involved. So not a single person is going to do a single project. A group of uh, people are going to do a project. So which means that each project can we can split into a separate modules and each modules has to be developed in parallel by separate members and finally you will try to integrate it to have a faster approach of software development modularity used and second one is reusability so let's say that uh, a project has been already created now we have to create some updates for it so if you want to create an update for that particular project or particular software we are not going to create it from the scratch. We are going to reuse the some existing code that is available. Let's say that you want to create a MS Office Word document. For that, what you do is like you take some of the common features that has been already developed for WordPad and a Notepad. So in a WordPad and Notepad, what we do, we type a text and in that text, we will try to open, open it, save it, edit it, and then we will increase the size. All these things are common in MS Word also. Instead of creating a from a scratch, we will use the reusability code. So object oriented programming allows you to reuse the existing code and security, enhanced security is provided in object oriented language and our structure oriented programming language has some features. Apart from these features, we need some much more features of it. So object oriented gives you the such kind of a features. Let me see about what are the features in detail. Before that we will try to find it up what is why we need a object oriented programming. For that we need to know about what are the advantage disadvantages of structure oriented programming. It uses a functions and each functions are programmed is divided into modules and every module has its own data and functions which can be communicated with the other modules, which means that there is a lack in security. There is a lack in security. There is no control mechanism between data and security and code reusability is not possible. Okay, so this is the advantage of structure oriented. Now we go with object oriented programming. It has both data and methods. We will deal about what do you mean by data and methods in with a simple example, with a real time example in detail. So objects of the same class have the same data elements and methods, which means that you are grouping your information, related information into a particular kind of category. 
let's say that you know what is an array an array is a collection of variables of same data type which means that you are grouping elements of same data type that is a structure that is a um, array and then grouping of similar data structures similar data similar data with different data type that we call it as a structure now we have something called a classes that is available in object oriented programming so here in object oriented programming object is the communication media which sends and receive messages to invoke actions to make a inter process communication between the programs or between the models or between the classes or between the methods or functions we will use a something called as an objects a key idea in object oriented is you will take a real world scenario and you try to simulate it you take the same concept and you try to implement as a program so which means that when you put it at a practice it will looks like a real world entity now some of object oriented programming languages are listed here java c sharp c++ ruby simula python and php all these things are object oriented languages in that java is a pure object oriented simula is a pure object oriented and c sharp is a pure object oriented languages okay now let me see about what are the object oriented features so the common and the most core object oriented features are class object data abstractions encapsulations inheritance polymorphism dynamic binding and message passing now let me see what is a class okay a class what is it it's like a real world entity it's a grouping of informations what kind of informations you are grouping the datas and its functionalities grouping of datas and functionalities the datas can be information about a person or information about a thing or its attributes variables etc methods the actions or operations are functionalities okay concept of bundling both member and member function into a single unit and that single unit is called as a class and the process of achieving it is called as a encapsulation okay now let me go with a very simple thing the class acts like a general template let's say that when you take about a dog if you want to describe something about a dog first thing you will describe its attributes what is its breed what is its size what is its age what is its color a breed which indicates say it can be a pomeranian it can be a it can be a labrador it can be an alsatian it can be a doberman or whatever it may be functionalities or you can say it as a member functions what actions is that it will eat sleep sit run uh, and obey our commands these things you group into a single unit and that single unit name is called as a class and the process of achieving this thing is called as an encapsulation now let me see about an object now let me see that we are going to have three dogs in it and each dog is a real world object now if you want to mention each thing then you can call each object as a each dog as an object and for each object Uh, this will maintain a separate data sheets for it this data sheet is nothing but a class right here all our docs but each docs are of a different and each has its own attributes and each has its own functionalities you can describe with the common attributes but the values for it differs how you can differ that value with the help of an objects now encapsulation so it's a simple formula i have given it encapsulation equal to code plus data and you are going to combine this code and data into a single unit that is called as a class that's it definition is over encapsulation encapsulating both code and data into a single unit and that name of unit is called as a class data abstractions so what do you mean by data abstractions it's a concept of hiding the internal working and showing only the essential details let's say that if you want to drive a car it is enough to know about what is an accelerator what is a brake how to apply brake how to apply clutch and how to apply gear that's it 
how to steer it that is enough to know about driving a car we don't want to know the internal functionalities of a car let's say that how the engine works how the accelerator works how the petrol is com uh, com petrol is converted into a combustion and how this combustion is makes the engine run all these things we don't we don't want to know about it these are called as internal detail data abstraction is the concept of showing only the essential detail and hiding the internal details how you can achieve it with the help of a concept called as a class now we will go with dynamic binding so dynamic it's called as a runtime binding you are relating it so which means that your actual code which is getting executed only in the part of a runtime so it will get linked only during when you run your program until until that the, your program process will not get linked so it's an analogous to inheritance and polymorphism that's it. message passing how will it is done with the help of an objects with the help of an object creations with the help of an object creation let's say that we have already seen that if you have a class called as an dog there are varieties of docs available and each doc you can physically say it as an object and for each object that class attributes and methods will have its different functionalities this we call it as a message passing now let me see about inheritor this is one of interesting and real world thing that has been extracted from our real world and it was put into the program practice it's a it's concept of creating something new from existing right so we are a newborn peoples newer generations and we are created from our existing forefathers and grandfathers creating something new from existing it supports reusability in that inheritance you can hide your internal data with the help of an access specifiers any class that is existing is called as a parent class or base class and the newly created is called as a child class or derived class okay now let me see about the properties of inheritance so this diagram depicts about the inheritance so in the left hand side we have a lion and the right hand side we have an another lion cub so you can say it as all the from this lion this lion cub has has been evolved so here the lion that is like uh, it's like a simple communication son and the base class and the baby cup says that dad and the derived class this is a concept of inheritance deriving something new from the existing now apart from it let me see about another thing another picture debit slide so this is a simple uh, conversations a nurse is taking a baby and uh, he is going to his father and say that he looks just like a father which means that the inherited class will have the common attributes of his parent also you may have heard about it some people may say that you looks like your mother you looks like your father which means that we are inherited from that which means that we share some of a common attributes of our parents apart from some additional information also now this is an another example so here in inheritance a newly created class can come from multiple parents also that is like multiple classes also and this newly created class shares both the attributes both the functionalities both the features of all its parents sometimes a child may resemble both the appearance of this father and the mother this is also possible it shares all the properties of its parent it may come from a single parent or it may come from a multiple parents of a class now let's say that a parent has a car that is like his dad has a car and his mother has a diamond ring so now these are the properties of his parents now these children has a rights to inherit both the properties of his father as well as his mother which means that he can inherit both the car and as well as the diamond ring of her parents okay that's it now what are the types of inheritance we have single inheritance multiple inheritance multi level hierarchical then hybrid inheritance 
so single one parent one children multiple inheritance a single child can have more than one parent multi level inheritance it's a multi level of single inheritance where each children can have at most one parent and each parent can have at most one children hierarchical inheritance a single parent can have multiple children now look at the difference multiple and hierarchical in multiple inheritance a single children can have multiple parents but in hierarchical inheritance a single parent can have multiple children that is the properties of multiple inheritance and hierarchical inheritance hybrid it's a combination of any type two or more types of inheritance now access specifiers now let me stop with this access specifiers let's consider this what do you mean by access specifier it helps us to restrict your data it helps us to uh, hiding your data data hiding is possible with the help of an access specifier so for understanding this scenario i am going to give you a simple understanding simple real time example of it let's consider this triangle as a home if you want to enter into the home then how will you enter it with the help of a door if you consider your home as a class then door is considered as an object so if you want to access any properties of a class then you should access only the help of an object you should enter into the help of an object if you want to enter into the home you will enter into the way the help of a door that is an object now after entering the door you may enter with three kinds of rooms one is like restroom it can be a kitchen or it can be a hall now these three rooms are there but here some rooms everyone are going to access it and for some room only the few peoples are allowed and some room only you are allowed to enter into it so there are some restrictions are it so based upon it we will classify it as this was the restriction if you want to enter the hall anyone can enter if you want to enter the kitchen then only these people should enter if you want to enter into the restroom then that is my private room so you are not authorized to enter it similarly a class within a class you can classify your data you can keep your data under three labels one we called as a private other one is called as a protected and third one is called as a public private only accessible within a class only you can access it cannot be inherited which mean that only you are going to access it you are not going to allow even your daughters or son or friends or what whoever it may be it's a private property cannot be directly access using object you cannot directly access it. so when you open a door will you directly go to the, will you directly go to the restroom no if you want to enter enter first you will enter the hall through that hall you will enter to the restroom so which mean that once you open a door you are not able to enter your into your restroom directly first you will enter to the hall through that only you will enter it right same thing private property cannot be accessed directly using object and second one is protected so it has a little bit of a restrictions but but little bit of a flexibility also protected property let's say the kitchen so if you want to enter into the kitchen so only restricted people are allowed only few people are allowed who are those you your parents and then <coughs> if you have a working lady uh, they are allowed right you won't allow outsiders to enter into let's say that uh, you have a pet animal dog you may allow your pet animal to wander in hall but you may not but you should you will not allow that pet animal to enter into the kitchen right only accessible within the class it can be inherited public anyone can access it let's say that in a hall who are those people can come you can sit and watch movies your parents can come your dog can come and play your friends can come visitors can come everyone can come there is no restriction and once you open a door this was the first thing it will get encounter which means that using a door you can directly access hall similarly using an object you can directly access public properties right i hope you have understood what are the concepts we have studied uh, now in the next video we will see about another set of object oriented features thanking you